Let's see here. Xavier Porter shoot the fire. Brooklyn fights in the building with the one and only Miles Bailey. The, the boxing aficionado. The, okay, don't forget that. The boxing aficionado, the great Miles Bailey. So what's going on today, sir? How you feeling? I'm good. I'm just trying to put this boxing together. Me and my team are working with some people. Um, this is really one kid, Lionel Delos Santos. De Los Santos. He's a Dominican kid. Really, really good. He got 250 fights, two or three losses. He's going to go for the Pan Am game. So I was working with, 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 his, with his trainer who put me on to it, Danny G. So that's my man from Philly. So you can look him up. But the kid is really good. There's a couple other guys I'm going to be working with. Um, Malik Shogun called me up the other day. He got a heavyweight. Christopher LaJoy, 17 and over 17 knockouts. So we're trying to work on some things to put that together so we can move forward. There's another kid, not that I'm working with him, but his name is Steven Bujo. It's Steve, but he's a cruiserweight. I'm not working with him, but he's a good fight. I met him at a fight. We were watching the fight together, me and my buddy Richard Swartz, who's going to be our cut man. And we're working at that. And Swartz, he's from Ring 10. Real good guy. Okay, how did you get the name Boxing Aficionado? Well, when I was in Vegas a few years ago, my man from Hustle Boss, Chris Robinson, he saw me and he was like, yo, you know about boxing, I see. So he started interviewing me and all my predictions were coming true. So he just labeled me the Boxing Aficionado. And if you check out some of my interviews, that's what I talk about. And usually I'm like right on target. I say 100%, maybe I lost one or two. And then when I don't know, I don't guess, I just say no. But usually when I say yeah, like when, when um, Amir Khan got knocked out by Canelo, I called that because I was with Evander and I was telling him. He's like, I don't know. I said, listen, you could bet the house on Canelo and he won. You talking about uh, Evander Holyfield? Yeah, Evander Holyfield. <laughs> the, real the real deal. The real deal because, you know, we were doing some, me, him, and Mike, we were doing some things together a few years ago with the boxing. We're still going to work on Evander's going another direction now. I'm not sure, but... That's my man, we go back many years, so hopefully we can get this thing rolling back and get these fighters and make this thing happen. Now you yourself, you are a former boxer? Yeah, I fought in um, Golden Gloves back in the 80s. I lost to the Junior Olympic champion. I didn't fight pro, but you know, I mean, I know the game. I've been in, in and out of it for the last 35, 40 years. Okay, now how was it fighting in, you know, in the Golden Gloves, things like that? Oh yeah, it was good. I, I fought with Ronald McCall, Owen McGeechee, uh, Tunde Foster, David Sieves, um, Mark Breland, Riddick Bowe, Dylan Parsley, all those guys came, Nermal Lorick, you know, and, and my man Pinchback. Pinchback is my boy. That's the guy that could have really made it big, but what happened was he got sidetracked on some things, but he was good because he knocked out a kid named Clinton Mitchell in the Empire State Games in 19, I think, 82, 83, somewhere around there. And Clinton Mitchell went on to beat Bernard Hopkins, who lost one fight after that in 20 years to Roy Jones. That's how good Farrar was, but that's a story in itself. I'm trying to get him back in the game, too, as a good trainer, a good mentor. That's my man, Farrar Muhammad Pinchback. Okay. Now, you know, coming from where you come from in, in, the, in the era that you came up in, looking at boxing now, what are, what are the differences? Well, see, back then, when we came along, we had to fight. Because, like, when I fought Tito Rosado... We had to fight. Yeah, we had to fight. <laughs> he had 90 fights. It was in a while. And I didn't really want to fight him, not because I didn't want to, because I knew he had the experience. And I fought better than I thought I did because I could have beat him. But I was mentally, because Mr. Pinchback, Farrar's father, told me if I fight him or this other guy named... Um, it was another tough kid. Uh, he was a real, real uh, tough Spanish dude. And he said, if I fight Tito Santana... I'm going to get knocked out. So I was like, oh, I hope I don't fight these guys to the end. And I wound up picking Tito on the second and third fight. But I did well, and I got some experience behind that. But, um, yeah, nowadays, the difference between then and now is because now it seems like these guys like to cherry pick and fight who they want to fight. And they, they, wanna, they, they don't want the O to go because you want to keep a lossy. Back in the day when they had Hearns, Leonard, Duran, Benitez, Hagler, it was like a round robin thing. Mike McCallum, everybody fought everybody. Mike got sides, you know, he got jerked around. But the rest of those guys, they fought. And it was great for boxing. Now you see they waiting for guys to get old, guys are getting their 30s and early 40s, then everybody wants to fight. See, back then, you, you had to go. There was no, oh, no. So that's how it was back then in the 80s. 
Do you think that's because of the business side of boxing now or the organizations? Well, that's, that's definitely what's going on now because the business side of it is that the money. And they know once you have the zero like Floyd got, that's why he demands 50, 100, 200 million to fight. Because if he had lost, he wouldn't be getting these numbers that he's getting. And I, I got to give him credit. He's beating everybody they put in front of him. But that was the problem. See, the, the problem back then is that people had lost and then but they were still going in and fight, make decent money, 5, 10, 20 million. That was still good money back then. But now, guys went those big mega days, 100, 200, 300 million. And they figure if they keep the zero intact, it can go that way. Thoughts on Deontay Wilder turning down 120 mil from the zone? Well, I, you know, I, I would think because his loyalty to Shelly, which I understand, but I think it's just my guess that as time goes on, he might um, – reconvene and start thinking about and reconsider that offer because that's a lot of money consider that if he's at this point of his career where he's really at the end because he's not going to fight forever and hopefully you know these are big paydays if somebody give you 100 million or 200 million whatever the number is you, you got to take it in my opinion I think that he he will when he really thinks about it do you think it was a wise decision a smart decision right now for himself in his career well, given that he's 40 and you know, 39 kills and he's getting older well, not that it was a bad decision. What I think he's going to do, I think he's going to think about it again, and maybe he's just trying to get more. That's what I think. So, I, it, it, I, not that it was a bad decision. It, it was kind of like, like with Robert Kraft the other day. When they made an offer, I think he's going to take that offer because if that video ever comes out, not to get off boxing. Yeah. So that's what I think the same thing with the Mr. Mr. Robert Kraft, the sex guy. Yeah, the sex guy. <laughs> so I think he's going to think about Older it. Older the Patriots and the Kraft and everything in the world. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Sex guy. Yeah, okay. But with Deontay, he's going to think about that money. Yeah. He's going to say, well, maybe, you know, that's not a bad payday. You know, two or three fights, whatever the deal was, because he's also going with, you know, matchroom boxing, Eddie Hearns, that would be all right. Mm. Okay. Okay, so now we got some fights coming up since you are the boxer aficionado. April 20th, Danny Garcia against Adrian Granados. Well, I think Danny should be able to take him real easy because Granados is a tough guy because he beat Amir Mon. And I knew any time a guy with two or three draws, you stay away from those guys. But Danny, with his experience, Danny should be able to take that. I would give Danny the, the, the edge on that one. Terrence Crawford, Amir Khan. Terrence, that's my man. Terrence Bud, man, he's he's pound for pound. I think you know not too many. That's going to be a good fight with him and Spence down the line. But I still like Bud Ted. for this fight. For this fight. Okay, down the line, Bud and Bud and Spence. Well, you know. Well, I got to think about that one because you know Spence is really, and I think Spence is going to get out of the division because. But to me, Mikey fought a real good fight the other day to, to hang in there. You know, he fought a gallant effort. Mm. I mean, of course, he was supposed to whitewash him, Spence, but. He, he did his job. He, he won the fight, no question. But I think it, it shocked me that Mikey hung in there the, as long as he did. You think Spence gave him too much respect? Well, it was just the speed yeah. came into to, to the picture because when when you're fighting a guy and you're a little quicker, you got to think because that's what happened. That's how I used to get away with guys because I was a little faster and, and they can't hit you. And, and there it is. But not that he couldn't hit him, but it was a situation where – that Mikey, and plus he's 39 and know you had a little respect for that because mm -hmm. he wasn't a guy just off the corner and he's a world champion. So, mm -hmm. but you know, Spence did his job. He got the job done. You know, there's no question. But I give Mikey a lot of credit because he went the distance and he didn't run it in a hole. Maybe one or two times they clinched. Other than that, he took his medicine like a real man. Do you? Th I like that. Do you think we'll get the Spencer Crawford fight? Yeah, it has to because what's going to happen is the not only the public's going to demand, but only thing to fear is that Spence grows out of the division because they say he's fighting light heavyweights and middleweights that he might not be able to hold the 147. But I, th I think if they do it within the next six months to a year, at least sign it, it it'll happen. Uh, Canelo and Jacobs. Yeah, well, Danny's my man, so I'm hoping for him. But again, the problem is that Canelo, with all the backing, all the politics, all the money, if he don't knock him out or beat him badly, Basically, Danny can't win the fight. And I'm not saying that because I know it since I've been watching over the years. You know, Canelo is a, is a draw. Not that Danny's not a draw, but Canelo draws from all different aspects of boxing. So mm -hmm. he's going to probably, you know, if it's close, they'll give it to him like they did with Triple G. Big baby, uh -huh. Anthony Joshua. Well, again, I mean, we was talking, <laughs> and like I said, I, I, know, I know them both because, like I said, Joshua, he's got a lot of experience, and he's with Eddie Hearns, and... You know, so again, it goes down to the politics again because I think Joshua was not supposed to win, but he could win because of the experience. But Big Baby, if he gets him early, but I think if it goes to the later rounds, 
it's gonna go to Joshua. But big, big baby would have to get him early. That's what I think. But if I had to, you know, pick, I would have to go with Joshua because the experience and. He's got to get him into the later round so he can get that decision if it goes that far. Before we even get to Big Baby and um, Anthony Joshua, we jumped over Deontay Wilder versus Dominic Brazil. Now, they have some history in the sense that they, Brazil has fought on the undercard several times, I believe, twice maybe. Um, and then there was a, a little flare up, physical altercation that took place between Brazil and Wilder like about two years ago in Alabama. Do you think that favors either man going into this fight? Yes, I think it, it favors Deontay because Wilder seems to be, to me, like really aggressive. I was just watching a little clip the other day and you told him that your heart is pumping and you want to be fearful of me. So I think he has that little edge now. And plus, Deontay got dynamite in both hands, but really that right hand. So Brazil, and I saw him, I was watching the fight the other night, you know, one clip, he's down. He, he goes down like a ton of bricks. You know, he folds like a cheap suit. And I'm not putting him down, I'm just keeping it real. Yeah. So I would I would say if I had to go and Deontay's hand is right, Deontay's going to beat him pretty easily. Who's your top five right now in each division? Well, we'll let's start with, yeah, who's your top five right now, right now well, in boxing? Well, again, well, you got to go with Crawford in the, um, the welterweight or junior welterweight, but he's officially a welterweight. In the middleweight, you got, um, I, I like the Triple G, but he fell off a little, so I'm going to pull for Danny, because that's my man. I, I love him. Um, we got the, the light heavyweights. Um, that other kid got hurt, so there's really not anybody really there, so I have to pass that for that division. But there's a, there's a, there's a couple of guys in, in, the, in the heavier divisions. My man, Michael Hunter. Michael Hunter's really good. I mean, he was a cruiserweight slash heavyweight, but... I'm looking for him, but I think he's a heavyweight now, but that's that's my boy and his brother Keith. He's another kid, so he's I think he's gonna be a middleweight, so that's my top four. And the fifth one, I mean, it, it's a whole bunch out there, so I'll leave that for the next interview so I can really go over and dissect it and see that these guys, when I make these predictions about these fighters, these fighters usually go on and do what I say they're gonna do, so I don't wanna put my foot in my mouth now, but those those guys I gave you pretty much solid, and, on that, on that note, if there was a fight that you wanted to make happen or had the opportunity to make happen, or that must take place, what fight would that be? That would be, of course, the Crawford versus Spence, because that's the fight out there. Because all the other guys have gotten old and not fighting no more. Floyd would have been good, but Floyd kind of like left the game. But he'll come back for the money. It's like they interviewed me before about would he fight Conor McGregor. And I said, yeah, for the, for them those numbers that they were given, and they gave it to him. Do, do you think the Crawford and Spence fight is bigger than the Joshua Wilder fight? Um, it's, it's it's splitting hairs. It, it's like toss up either way because those guys are doing it and they they trying to make the build up for the Crawford Spence fight. Like they're building it up now, but these guys got to keep winning. You know, I mean Spence looked okay against him, but if he fights the Pacquiao fight and looks good, and, and, and Bud beats um Amir Khan, then it's then it's on because then the public is going to beat the drums for that. One last question before I let you go. If Floyd came back, like you said, if they're doing the, doing the right check, let's say 150, 200, do you think he could beat these, one of these top welterweights right now? Yes and no. Yes because of experience and no because he's letting time go by and he's slipping. Just like all the great ones, Father Tom is undefeated. And that's why he's smart enough not to take those kind of fights because but if the numbers are big enough, he'll take it and, and he will get the loss because these guys are not just young lions and tigers, but... He's way past his prime. Not because he's a bad fighter, because you go through history from Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard, Larry Holmes, Roy everyone, Jones. Roy Jones, every one of them, Father Time sets in. That's it. All right, there you have it. Miles Bailey, the boxing aficionado. We're going to come back with another one real soon. All right, keep it locked there.